Tell us your role in each department. We'll go and start with Dave, we'll go to Chiro, Carl, and then the sheriff. Dave? I'm personal role? Yes, please. I currently serve as a deputy chief of the Wooten Fire Department. Uh, I've been a member there for about 24 years. Uh, next year I will assume the role as chief. In the town of Bowie, being on the Board of Chiefs is a six-year commitment. You get two years as battalion chief, two years as deputy chief, and then two years as the chief. So I've got two years to go. Chiro? Chief? Sorry. Good evening, everybody. My name is Chiro Chimento. I'm currently serving as the Public Police Department Chief of Police. And more importantly, I uh, have the distinct honor of being the 2019 president of Morris County Police Chiefs Association. It's been a great honor to do that this year. Uh, I'll be uh, happy to turn over the torch to President, soon to be Tom Willerer. Uh, so expect great things from him next year as well. Mm -hmm. Carl? Good evening, my name is Carl Bonafidi. We have different roles like these gentlemen at this table. First of all, I'm the past EMS captain of Rocks Become Number One Fire and EMS. I'm a 37 year member, still active. Don't mind my brace, that's an incident from the job. <laughs> Um, I'm also the president of the Morris County EMS Alliance for the last five years. I came in in January of over five years ago when I got a call from Lori and said, oh, you have to be at a dinner. I'm like, oh, oh, by the way, do you have awards that you want to give out? I'm like, wow. So in five years, starting off with Lou Jr. as my first president, and working with Sheriff slash past president James Gannon, and I had the honors of the last few years of working with Billy Lockwood. I'm a huge advocate of supporting this organization. I have pushed very hard for the EMS community for a better understanding what this organization does, and the organization has accepted bringing in outside services like Atlantic Health and St. Clair's under my leadership, um, having them recognized because they work with us in every aspect of this community side by side. And I will brag, sorry, this year EMS had a lot of student members that took the scholarship award, which is a huge accomplishment. Um, I do work with some agencies in Sussex County, and I do proudly brag that I am from Morris County. I do work with a past chief, Skip Danielson, that some of these gentlemen here know. He's also a part of the EMS community, and he is very active, and he always tells me that I'm in a very good community. So I am, like I said, bragging this year, the EMS did take 12 awards in a scholarship. So, but I've had great roles of working with Sheriff Gannon and President Lockwood. And Lou does come around with bus people. He's not here tonight, thank God. <laughs> so. uh, Sheriff Jimmy. Yeah, thanks. In this context, uh, we work in the Sheriff's Office uh, providing specialized police services within the county. You know, we have the Chiefs of Police represented here. Everything we do is in a partnership with the Chiefs of Police. But you've seen tonight the bomb squad here, uh, a canine handling uh, uh, also. Uh, we have a real robust canine program, about 11 plus 2, right? 13 uh, canines. We're naming two right now, two little guys. Um, we have CSI, our crime scene investigation uh, component, and a SWAT component, which is a full time uh, detail. Uh, you saw it tonight, Hope One is out there. You know, Hope One's gotten some, obviously, some claim most recently with regards to mental health and addiction, those types of programs. And uh, programs that were involved directly with the chiefs of police. Uh, are involving daily programs involving RSVP, you know, responsible school violence prevention, and everybody's, it's on the tip of everybody's tongue. But we have an intelligence unit called Big Stat that calls out any intelligence coming down from the federal government or the state or, uh, or any place uh, that we can get that type of intelligence. Uh, we've developed an app, an application, because you know that 81% of the time there's an incident of school violence, there's leakage, right? So that app gives a voice to the children who know the information of what's going to happen in the school that's been developed and rolled out. Uh, we have uh, a curriculum, behavioral threat assessment and management curriculum. Uh, we'll be uh, updating it tomorrow, right? We have uh, Marissa Reeves coming in tomorrow uh, to uh, breathe some more life into that curriculum. So once we've identified someone that may be problematic, how to deal with them because our mission is to return students to the ball field, return to chemistry class, not to be punitive. Uh, but work on those, and we also have tactics, right? We work very closely with the local police department on the tactics side. Last piece, houses of worship, right? You've heard the chiefs of police and us speak about houses of worship. 
317 of them. And I think you probably may have seen something or you've seen something. There's been things going on with regards to that, but we're on top of it always because we're in concert with the prosecutor's office. We have Prosecutor Napier, who is a great partner in this world. So uh, sort of that's what we do. That affects a lot of local police departments and EMS. Okay, that stole the first question I was going to ask you, Jim, so you're going to miss your turn on the next one. He's taking speaking classes, so he's, he's getting better. So, Okay, Dave, we're, we're, I'm going to ask some questions here if anybody you know, wants to raise their hand. and I won't, I'm over. I won't recognize unless you raise your hand. Charlie, that goes for you, and you can ask a question. I have some structured questions here. We're going to improvise. We're going to try to stump the boys up here. Dave. First question to you. Tell us briefly about some uh, new uh, technologies that are available to you uh, uh, that have dramatically increased your effectiveness. Well, for anybody who got to visit the engine outside, that's uh, Putin's latest and greatest engine. It's uh, considered a heavy engine, which means it's got rescue tools on it. Um, it's really built to do more with less. Um, and I felt to mention that I'm the president emeritus of the Morris County uh, Active Chiefs Alliance. So I think that, that engine represents what most of the towns in Morris County will be looking to build for the future. And when I say it does more with less, uh, it's designed to operate with low pressure nozzles, low pressure hoses. So when a uh, hose team walks into a structure to fight a structure fire, probably two men on the hose line rather than four. You know, it's no secret that volunteer firefighters are dwindling in numbers, unfortunately. Um, so we've got to prepare for the future and build uh, rigs that can do more with less. Also, a lot of our tools are now battery operated. We have Jaws of Life on there that are battery operated with a battery that snaps in the back, much like a screw gun, um, as opposed to way back in the, in the past, we used to roll out a hand truck with a generator and large hoses that were hooked to a hydraulic pump that operated the Jaws of Life. It's now a self-sustained contained unit that one man can, can approach a, a motor vehicle and cut it open uh, on battery power alone. There are fans on there that are battery powered instead of electric with gas motors powered. Uh, there are spotlights that are all battery powered. So everything is self-sustained. And also, if you walk around that engine, everything is deployable from the street. You don't have to climb up to get ladders. You don't have to climb up to get tools. Everything you can reach from the, from the ground level, grab and go. So that's, uh, that's the overall uh, approach to technology. Thermal imaging cameras, if I had to pick one specific technology that has enabled us to do our jobs better, Probably the thermal imagers uh, have brought us light years ahead. Whereas when I started in the fire service, these were your eyes. You grabbed the wall, you searched the room, and you stayed on that wall until you found the exit. Now with a thermal imager, I can see through smoke, I can find a body, I can find warm, warm uh, bodies in, in the room much quicker than ever was the case with a tool poking around. And uh, those cameras have gotten smaller, they've gotten less expensive. In fact, the engine is now equipped with two of them, whereas when they first came out, I want to say 18 years ago, we had one for three engine companies. We now have two on a single engine. So it's uh, really good. In fact, we have Scott packs that have them built into the mask now. That technology still has a little further to go because it's somewhat difficult to, to read what you're seeing on the screen. But I think it will evolve to the point where it'll be a, a true heads up display and it'll be a, uh, an asset to the fire department. Any questions? Yes. Chief, what type of backup do you have on that? Regularly out there. I was looking at it. You mean uh, generators? Got the video metal on? Uh, event that you had it out there. Is there generators built into that for you? Lights and everything that you need? Yeah, we have an inverter on board uh, that'll and it also. Uh, Does that feed off your own fuel, or is that separate? It feeds off the own fuel, and it, it'll get to a point where if it detects that it's drawing down the batteries, it'll start shutting the lights off sequentially. The uh, non-emergent lights first, and then the emergent lights after that. And of course, we carry portable generators on our rescue truck and our ladder truck as well. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Kiro, um, next question for Chief. Um, outside of the dog, what are some of the most important things a person can do to secure their home? Uh, ring doorbell, uh, monitoring system. Uh, how can we, as private citizens, better secure our homes? Well, with the advent of technology that have recently come about, I think it puts law enforcement in an advantage uh, to better combat crime and serving the public. When it comes to home safety, you mentioned household pets, great deterrent. Uh, even if it's a, uh, a dog that's not as aggressive, 
uh, that will probably be enough to scare away any prospective burglar. Uh, what, what I'd like to uh, promote are the new doorbell surveillance monitors that are about. Ring happens to be the most popular one at this point. And most of the time, your local police departments have access with cooperation of those residents that do utilize uh, the Ring doorbell services. And at that point, we're able to much more efficiently and effectively scour and canvas a neighborhood uh, in which people have these cameras which would potentially lead to the apprehension of burglars, uh, home robbers, uh, anything of that nature, lost children. Uh, we've been able to utilize them in a wide fashion of uh, all these services. Uh, I would also encourage that if people do go on vacation, most of your local police departments will have and offer a service to you all as homeowners to periodically monitor your home while you're away on vacation. All you have to do is stop in your local police department, usually a one simple form as to your contact information and your expected times in which to be home and back in the area. Uh, and in the event of an emergency, while these periodic checks are taking place, the uh, police department can contact you and, God forbid, your house was broken into, at least make that notification relatively quick so you can re secure your home. I have a quick question for you, uh, Chief. Um, the neighbor app, do you guys use that in your town? We happen to use it in Butler, yes, and I know many agencies in Morris County use it as well. I always encourage fostering a relationship with your neighbors. That app will allow that relationship building to take place at a much more accelerated rate. I know that we, um, in Mount Olive, and Chief Beecher might be able to better uh, question this, as we use it in Mount Olive, a neighbors do. I don't know if that was started by you, Chief, or was that just something that the neighbors, I mean, it says, it says neighbors, so I mean, I assume it was started by the neighborhood watch team or some sort. Ring Corporation has had a community outreach to the police to form partnerships whereby we uh, enter into uh, memorandums of understanding. We have a resolution approving that. And then we have our officers that are linked in with the civilians that opt into that program. Okay, thank you. Carl. What are the question three? Sorry? Anybody skip the question three? I'm not, I'm not following the format. I, my wife always says I'm unfiltered, so here we go. Now I'm just going to make your question that much harder. Okay. How do town ambulance squads work with EMS personnel from a local hospital like St. Clair's or Atlantic Health? How do you guys coordinate with that, Paul? So Atlantic and St. Clair's are, provide ALS service, which means advanced life support. Mason paramedic units per their territories allowed by the state into certain areas of Morris County. And St. Clair's covers as far, as far as Long Valley all the way up to the top of, of my high point to Sussex County, all the way up to Montville. They cover with six different ALS support units. There are paramedics from the hospitals that work with us. Atlantic Health has the same operation, and what they do is they cover part of half of Port Sydney as a backup. Am I right, Martin? Yeah. Okay. And they cover uh, Morristown, Long Valley, and they go out as far as Chatham and Madison and the whole routine. And then there are, you will see if the ALS programs are overloaded, you will see people from Monarch, which is from St. Barnabas and Livingston base. They are the third ones based out. At the same time, Atlantic Health provides us um, medical air support. And you have one unit based in Necon, over off of Love Lane, and they are a team of three of a pilot, a flight medic, and a flight nurse that you will also see that we, they assist us at the same time. Not as everything is the same with fire and, the, and law enforcement. Some game days you have a lot of activities, and they will also send out units Basic life support is the same thing as we as volunteers do. They will come in and assist us if we are overloaded with calls in the town or township that you live in. Same thing as mutual aid for fire department. Same thing with law enforcement. There are other agencies that they work with us at all times. Both hospital bases work with us in many ways by providing free training to us as, as members of EMTs because of our certifications. 
and then they work with us in other sponsoring events. Like tonight, coming here to support the 200 Club to show you what an actual paramedic truck comes in with. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> Sheriff, I have personal experience uh, working with the, uh, the Sheriff's Department, and it was, <clears throat> it was not anything I really wanted to do, and I mean that in the nicest way because it had to deal with Alzheimer's with my mother. I can tell you, five years ago, a representative came to my house from the Sheriff's Department, and that person couldn't have been more cordial and more compassionate to the needs of my mother, um, who was, an, and I always mention this, she was an RN at St. Clair's for 35 years. She spent her life taking care of somebody, and ironically, she needed somebody to monitor her. Tell us how that program works, if you would. Yes, we have Project Lifesaver, right? Project Lifesaver is in every county sheriff's office in New Jersey, the 21 counties. We happen to have the second largest one next to Mom and we We have 139 people registered in Project Lifesaver. Traditionally, people with dementia, people with Alzheimer's, people with traumatic brain injury, Down syndrome, um, people on the spectrum, autism spectrum disorder. So we fit in with a transponder. We change batteries every 30 days, along with the local police departments. Uh, we work with them. When a person goes uh, out of bounds somewhere, uh, we can find them, vector in on with an antenna. Um, there are some, uh, there are some uh, UAV technologies, new drone technologies, but the one for Project Lifesaver is not that good right now. Um, so we end up doing it the old fashioned way with an antenna and our canine program. Uh, just to let you know how this all works, I mean, we have a pretty big county, right? 482 square miles because we have the water called the Capacon, and we have 500,000 people on the button. That's where we're at right now, about 150 off that million people. Uh, we, uh, our national average for finding a person in Project Life Service 30 minutes, we're at 13 minutes. So we return people uh, to their families extremely quick. It's free. If, I don't know if you heard this, it's free. Um, I go around, some people charge. We don't charge for the service. We'll take care of everything. Um, it's been getting a lot more notoriety lately. We've outfitted some people that people didn't think could be outfitted because people will take off their transponder, and as you can imagine. But it gives a little piece of, piece of mind to the caregiver. You know, the caregiver, if we're not careful, can go first, right? So, um, but it's a phenomenal program, highly recommended. I have the older canine uh, programs, and I have people that have come out of our community policing unit when someone goes out of bounds. So we'll put resources out right away. And there's no better than the local police department that are out there. To dovetail on that, we have a search and rescue team. Okay, so when we get long protracted matters, we have a search and rescue team uh, that we're uh, standing up right now. We're in training with it, with the park police, you know, between all of us in the county, we have a lot of uh, ATVs, and we have horses and dogs and things like that. So again, working with uh, the police department, just thinking, what last winter, Chief, we were up there a few times in Bud Lake with a, a lady who kept on walking away, right? So in the middle of the snowstorm, how she was staying alive, I don't know, but it caused us to say, we need to step up our efforts on that side of the house. So we have all those bases pretty well covered. Thank you, Chair. Um, Carl and Dave, I feel like this is the uh, bachelor number one. <laughs> I have, um, um, I want to take, it sounds like, it still sounds like, I, I want to take a CPR class. I'm an umpire. I coached for years. I got trained uh, CPR and DPW years ago. And I think a lot of these, uh, these coaches, uh, at least one of the members of the, the coaching staff should be trained in CPR. How would somebody like myself get CPR trained? You guys offer courses? Yeah, yeah. so for anybody who visited the tables on the way in, the group fire department table had a couple of uh, CPR dolls on it. Uh, we have a staff of trained CPR trainers uh, that offer those services for a small donation. Uh, we will come in, we'll, if you own a company or a corporation, We'll come and we'll train your staff. We've done a lot of schools. Um, I, I agree with everybody in this room should be trained in how to do CPR and know how to use an AED, a defibrillator. Um, I'll, I'll share a brief story with you. This past July 4th, I went to a fireworks display at somebody's house in Denville. 
had my car ride home, coming down Farby Hill Road in Boone Township. So a uh, car pulled over to the side, the driver landed in the middle of the street. His wife was kind of going crazy. There was uh, luckily a, uh, somebody who had been in the police academy pulled up behind him, started CPR. I got out of my truck, we took turns, we, we both performed CPR on him. The police uh, showed up about five minutes later. They rolled in, BLS showed up with the ambulance, they loaded the patient into the ambulance and took him away. Um, I never learned the fate of that person, but I guarantee you he would have been, he would have passed had there not been at least three people on the scene that knew CPR. I'm not an EMT. The Boone Fire Department does not provide first aid services. We're blessed to have the Kiwanis Ambulance Squad that does that for us. But because we, but because I'm tra trained in how to do CPR and AED, and my certification expires every two years, I go for my refresher training, and I had the confidence to walk up and start pushing that guy's chest. Everybody in this room has the ability to do that, and I encourage everybody to sign up for a CPR class. Um, you can reach out to Glenn Baker. He's, he'll give you his contact information at the end of the, uh, the meeting tonight if you're interested. Or your local ambulance squad, I'm sure that they have places that, uh, if they don't do it, they have uh, ties that they can hook you up with, and I'm sure Carl can fill them from there. Oh, yes, both St. Clair's and Atlantic, <coughs> excuse me, both provide uh, as a small fee. Even us as volunteers, we have to pay a small fee, which most organizations cover it's a five the fee is five dollars to cover the paper card that we get and now we get an email and we still get charged five dollars so that's what, what Dave was talking about is the small fee goes to that but they also provide it there has been a lot of changes in laws um, one of the biggest is in the high school program that they have to have an AD on sites of games that's why you see trainers more and more trainers I worked with Roxbury because of the way the law was written that our trainer works with us one-on-one, -on -one, but he has a train, a seat at the AD in every game, every varsity level has to have that on there. And it seems that laws will be changing, that all coaches um, will be forced to get this because it's not so much the breaths getting into them, it's the compressions. If you don't want to do mouth to mouth, that's not what we're worried about. It's doing the 100 compressions, keeping the heart, pushing the blood through the body that's the most important thing about CPR. And even today, with advanced um, technology, um, I'd like to thank Rock My Neck, who brought their ambulance for me. They have what's called a Lucas. It's about a $25,000 machine. And what it does, it does automatic compressions the whole time. They strap it over them, and they're able to do that while those vehicles moving, while they're strapped in. But it's mostly about getting the compressions into the patient during more than worrying about breaths. And that's where the technology has changed from when Dave and I both started many, many years ago. As an EMT, I'm required to keep my CPR to be an EMT. I again go through a four year hour class every two years to part of my three year EMT card. If you're not, when you first take EMT now, it's approximately 220 hours, and that is not clouding the 10 hours of clinical at a hospital base and getting your CPR at the same time. And if I'm correct, Dave, the academy now through fire one and two is mandatory that then all those cadet, those gentlemen and ladies that come out have to be CPR certified. It is part of the academy here in Morris County, who is always on the cutting edge of that. Because we feel, and I'm a firefighter EMT, your partner is the one who drops, is the one you want to be on top of first. They're not waiting for somebody else to come on. So as Dave explained in the story, being just getting on scene before another provider, just starting the compressions is a very important thing. I'm not sure chiefs if it's required through law enforcement. I do know their academies, they do make them come out of there with CPR. Some academies want these guys in the EMTs. I have to ask one of these chiefs or Sheriff Gannon, is it required when they come to the academy now to be CPR certified? You see a lot of heads nodding yes, so that is correct. So that, that is one of the cutting edges of this county. And if all of us up here are proud to talk about at any time, at any different level. Correct, Sheriff? Chief? Chief? Absolutely. So. Thank you, Carl. Up, there's one thing that we all agree on stands. We all work as a team. There is no line of difference. And everybody I've worked either politically or other advancements, but when we're on the job, we're all one and we work together. And I've been involved with some very large scale incidents to even small ones. And if there's no difference of who we are. We all work together. If something is bad, we all make sure each other is taken care of. 
and we move on to do the next job of the day. Thank you, Carl. Uh, Jimmy Rizzo, I just got a, a, a message here. Um, we have an event already planned for next year, CPR training class in January at Jersey Girl. So just to let you know. Uh, we're going to open up the floor to questions now to anyone that would like to ask our panel. Would anyone like to ask any questions? Okay. I want to thank everyone for coming here this evening. Once again, thanks for bringing all the uh, apparatus and everything out there. Um, I was impressed by a lot of things. I was, some of the police officers with all those, it's bad that we, that's great that they have those things, but I thought they only used them in the movies, but I, you know, it's sad that we have to have them, but thank God that they do. And thank God we have the training and we have the dedicated people in Morris County uh, protecting us every day. Did I forget anything? Where's my boss, Lori Richmond? Thank you all. Have a great evening.